Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Metuchen. For those of you here in our sanctuary this morning and to all of those worshiping online, welcome. We are so glad you're here. I have a few announcements and reminders as we start this morning. Um, the first is a note of condolence to the Roscoe family on the passing of Bob's father, Milton. Calling hours will be today at Lair Gablisco from 1 to 4 p.m. with a service tomorrow at 11 a.m. at Faith Lutheran Church in New Providence. Our prayers are with the Roscoe family and all who loved Milton. Yesterday was a pretty big day here at the church, a lot going on. Our Presbyterian women are grateful to have another successful Holly Fair. Uh, we have a report that $2,577 were raised. Yes. $1,000 more than last year. Incredible. Um, also, a thank you to all who came to festivize the sanctuary, you may have noticed. The Advent study, uh, Mary Had a Baby, meets again today for part two out of four of the study. study. Our seminarian intern, Hannah, uh, leads this fun interactive study, so please join her in the chapel after worship. Our Advent angel trees are up in the narthex and in the social center, and it, it doesn't take much to bring joy to residents of the centers we are sponsoring, so please take an angel or two and spread some holiday cheer be sure to get the instructions when you pick up an angel. A note on the men's breakfast. This is typically held on Wednesdays, but only for this month it'll be held on a Tuesday, Tuesday, December 13th. So please mark the change in your calendar so as not to miss on Reverend Gary's amazing breakfast and the time of fellowship. The poinsettia orders are due tomorrow, December 5th. There are forms in the narthex and in the church if you would like to order them by tomorrow. Today is the first rehearsal for the Christmas pageant, so please check the Sunday paper, the last few pages of the bulletin, for details concerning today's rehearsal. And finally, I hope you stay for coffee hour and fellowship after worship. We will have refreshments in room 109 just through that hallway there. Please join us uh, to continue in our togetherness with a moment of refreshment and fellowship. With that, I invite us to prepare our hearts and spirits for worship. O come, O come, Emmanuel, as we light these candles, so kindle within us the fire of your love, that within you, that with you, we might set the world ablaze with your peace and joy. Amen. Now please rise in body or in spirit for our call to worship. God's vision for peace is a realm where all live together in harmony. God calls us to be in this community. Let us gather together to worship. Thank you. 
as we confess this morning, let us find freedom in the gift Jesus offers us by acknowledging our sin and brokenness. Now let us enter into confession this morning together saying, God of all creation, your vision of peace is beyond our knowing. We have been hurt and we have seen destruction. So we turn around and hurt others, destroying what you have called good. Forgive us and fill us with your knowledge so we may bring, bring forth your peaceful kingdom. Amen. Jesus came into this world to save sinners just like us. And on the cross, his body bore the weight of our sins so that we may be redeemed. In our brokenness, we are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> to invite children to come forward. Are there children here today? And how about if everybody who comes forward would sit right around over in here? There is a lot of stuff here. Come on up. There you go. Come right into here. Right around in here. Okay. Is there any more coming? Oh, I see a couple more coming. I'm so glad to see you all here today. So I wanted to tell you you know, this is the time of Advent, but when I grew up, we called it Christmas time, which I now understand that was not quite right. And that Advent, it, good morning, come on in right here. Advent is about what's going to happen in the future. Do you know what's going to happen later today? What's going to happen later today? What's that? You just guess, okay? Yeah, yeah. Later today, what's going to happen? It's going to turn nighttime. It's going to turn nighttime. Sure as day turns into night. Excellent answer. What do you think? Later today? It turns into the afternoon. Turns into the afternoon. Okay. So chronologically, we're worked out that later on things will happen. But we really don't know what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Now, when you get a Christmas tree in the house, there's lights on the Christmas tree, and there's, and there's presents, we think that sooner or later, what's going to happen? Santa's going to come. It's going to be Christmas, right? Yeah. So we, we got... Santa, Santa. Yeah. Really I know. So it, we have an idea that something's going to happen. But you know what? When I go into Christmas time or Advent, you know what I do? I don't look ahead. I go backwards. I remember things. Like I remember when I was a boy and I got a special... Christmas present on Sunday morning, and it was a really big box. You know what was inside? A bean bag. <laughs> you don't know what a bean bag is, but I thought it was pretty cool. Or I go back to when my children were little, and I can remember one time when our son climbed up our Christmas tree, and he was a little boy, and he pulled the whole thing down over on top of him. And I thought it was so funny. So I, and when it's, when it's Advent, you know, I don't look forward. I look back to memories. Isn't that kind of strange? And I've got, I've got an idea why I do this. When I think back on those wonderful things that happen, it makes my heart ready for more. It makes my heart ready to be happy again. So maybe you don't know what's going to happen today. I mean, the Giants are going to play. They, they, they might win. They might lose. I know. We don't know. We don't know. But we do know 
that God loves us and prepares our heart for good things. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks that you prepare our hearts for you. Amen. There is Sunday school today. This way. Isaiah 1, 11, chapter 11, verse 1 to 10. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear. But with the righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the need of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid the calf and the lion and the fatten together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the winged child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. This is the word of the Lord.
Amen. Our second scripture today and our second Advent gospel lesson comes from the book of Luke. Chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. As the birth of Jesus is foretold. Listen for the Spirit as we read these words together. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. God of wisdom, God of peace, be with us now as your word reaches us today. Amen. Well, it's that time of year again. The time where we watch and share the Christmas movies that are our family's favorites. We got into a rousing discussion about this at youth group this week. Some families are Christmas Carol families. Some are Home Alone families. Some are Polar Express families. Some, like mine, if you have someone like my dad in your sphere, have multiple family Christmas movie viewings that are tradition. Every year I'm home, we have to watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And any time my dad fixes something in the house, he acts like Clark Griswold and shouts, Fix the Newell Post! We also have to watch The Grinch, the Jim Carrey version. And for days, we hear quotes of The Grinch's nighttime schedule that he recites to get himself out of the Whoville event. 4.30, stare into the abyss. 5, solve world hunger, tell no one. 5.30, jazzercise, 6.30, dinner with me. I can't cancel that again. 7, wrestle with my self-loathing, I'm booked. And of course, there are the other classics, Elf, Last Holiday, A Christmas Story, White Christmas, The Miracle on 34th Street, It's a Wonderful Life, Though only one carries this word in its title, all of these Christmas movies, including whichever one you or your family watches the most, have the same climactic point, a Christmas miracle. A transformation that occurs that is miraculous. In The Christmas Carol, it's Mr. Scrooge who eliminates the financial debts of his neighbors after confronting his own greed and mortality. In Home Alone, it's Kevin, realizing he misses and loves his family just as they overcome all odds to get home to him in time for Christmas. In The Grinch, it's his hard heart growing three sizes 
from the kindness and generosity of a young girl, and so on. You can picture what happens in yours. And just like the music, the tree, the lights, and decorations that we wait for every year, we wait to watch these miracles unfold in our favorite stories. It makes sense for us to look toward these things at this time of year. It resonates with us as we finish up the year and reflect on all that has happened, counting the moments, taking stock of our fears and our losses, wanting to head into a new season with joy. And that is the heart of these Christmas miracles, watching someone move from fear into joy. As we enter into the story of Jesus' birth, miracle is certainly the word used for his mother Mary's situation. And there are many miracles happening here in this passage. The angel descending to Mary, Mary that she, an unwed teenager from Galilee, be chosen. For Mary to conceive and carry a son as a virgin, that Jesus himself comes as the son of God to earth. And within these is a Christmas miracle that mir mirrors the heart of our favorite stories. When Mary moves from fear into joy. After all is presented to her, Mary says to the angel, but how can this be? The angel responds, do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit will fall upon you. And now your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son. For Mary, the miracle of moving from fear into joy comes in knowing she is not alone even though her experience is unique. God is with her. Her cousin is experiencing this alongside her. And after she hears this, she says, Here I am. Let it be. For it is its own miracle when we know we walk through difficult moments with each other and with God. Moments when we aren't sure what's next, when we aren't sure what to believe. Moments of suffering, grief, pain, moments of fear. When we walk alongside each other in those moments, we walk each other from fear into joy. In all our favorite Christmas movies, the miracle occurs when the joy of friendship, family, togetherness takes over the fear. We seek it in these stories, we seek it in our own lives, too. In 2020, a time when for so many joy seemed distant, the magazine Christianity Today reported that the YouVersion Bible app had seen an 80% increase in use. The most searched, read, and bookmarked passage of scripture was from Isaiah 41.10. Do not fear for I am with you. Through every hardship, people continue to seek strength, peace, and hope, said the app's founder, Bobby Grunewald. What do we count as miracles in our lives? When have we leaned on each other and on God to move us from fear into joy? Sometimes that joy may seem near our grasp, Sometimes it may feel impossible. Anderson Cooper has a podcast called All That There Is, and there's one episode titled You Are Not Alone. And in that episode, people call in to talk about times of grief and how in the midst of hardship, they have found connection and love. One caller named Rose shared this. I'm an 85-year-old Catholic nun. I buried a friend today. And something that I've learned over the years that I believe from experience is once you've really deeply grieved a loss of a loved one, you have the possibility of being much more compassionate to yourself and to many others. 
And that opens up a tremendous gift in life. It's the gift of vulnerability, and I truly treasure it. David White, the poet, says, your vulnerability, your hardship, is the place where you are open to the world whether you want to be or not. But if we choose to be, there's a great depth that rewards us in some mysterious way. Another caller said, the opportunities that I've had because of my experience are the opportunities to connect on a profoundly deeper level with humans than I ever thought was able before. I'm not afraid of what other people are going through. And there's this common thread that runs between all of us who've ever really lost or feared. So I feel connected to you and the folks that have shared their stories and the people that I know are out there that I haven't met yet. We have such an opportunity to deepen our connection because of what we share. And I know it might not seem like it, especially if it's fresh, but eventually you will find things to be grateful for. You will find joy. Mary's vulnerability in face of the hardship that was sure to endure opened her up to the world and the mysterious rewards of faith. And her incredible task to carry the Christ child comes within the call to be open to God's presence with her. That call is for us, too. God's call upon us does not mean all our fears are just going to disappear. Instead, the call to not be afraid is a reminder that joy is arriving, not in the absence of fear, but encountering it alongside each other and with a God that is with us. With God, we are empowered to face the fear in our world with love. With God, we can face the scarcity in our world with our witness to the flourishing of life that is possible. In today's passage, we hear the impossible being proclaimed. A virgin Mary is to give birth to a son. And she is told this will be done by the power of the Holy Spirit that will overshadow her, that we are assured will overshadow us. Even though Mary faced the impossible, even though her cousin Elizabeth faced the impossible, we hear that God was working in them. And that assures me that God is working in us too. For the faith from generation to generation has proved that with God, no miracle is impossible. Mary, who is told she will now need to anticipate this daunting situation, who will need to embrace the invitation to be transformed, leans in. She has trust in this word, saying, Here am I. Let it be. She steps into the long tradition of this refrain, Isaiah, who we leaned on in 2020. Similarly, when in the presence of God is told to not be afraid, later on we hear God say, Whom shall I send? And who will go out for us? And Isaiah says, here I am, Lord, send me. Mary's trust isn't going to change Mary's situation or circumstances. For if what is proclaimed comes to be, she will be further marginalized. What she now anticipates probably won't fully erase any feelings of fear she may have, but through faith, she is willing to encounter the fear, knowing that she does not do it alone. And that is enough to carry her forward. There are many paths ahead that Mary will have to walk on, unknown paths she will have to travel, but she leans into her trust in God who is with her. Her story, what she brings forth to our faith, is one worth emulating. As we take stock of the year, and ready ourselves for a new season, we realize we too have unknown paths before us. We too are anticipating what God will bring forth in such unexpected places. In this season of anticipation and waiting and wondering, God is bringing forth life in unexpected places. 
It was God's call to Mary to accept the Holy Spirit and fulfill her purpose. It is God's call to us. An Advent question for us is, are we willing to do that? Do we say yes to God's invitations? Do we say yes to new horizons, new possibility, and new lives? Will we move alongside each other and be the midwives to something birthing among us? For if nothing is impossible with God, are we ready to say, here am I, let it be? I say watch your family's favorite Christmas movie and find the Christmas miracle. Notice those around you for whom your presence alone could bring about such a similar thing. And may we move from our fears into joy in the same way, the way that Mary did, recognizing we are not alone. A life of faith with Jesus Christ is a path of life that moves us continually from fear into joy. It's a life full of these kinds of miracles. And do not be afraid, for we are here, and Jesus the Christ is coming to be with you. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I feel ready now for Christmas. 
what a wonderful transformation this has been. So in, in order to continue our worship here today, I bid the ushers to come forward if they're ready to collect our offering. and gracious God, we give you thanks for what you've given to us, and we pray that you would give us the strength and courage to offer our heart, not only to you, but to those that we meet. Let these gifts that we bring give our heart to those who need help, to those who need love, to those who need assurance. We pray this in Christ's name, amen. In the spirit of offering... Well, look inside your heart and find some peace. Pass it around. See how many times you can give away peace this morning. This is, this is, this is a contest now. See how much peace you can give right now. Peace be with you. Well, Cameron, I just saw you hug your mom. Well done. 
Now, that's a sign of peace. I like that. I'm going to encourage you for just a moment. This is going to sound a little bit like a children's message. Don't be afraid. Just, just take a moment. If you want to close your eyes, if you don't, it's fine. But go in your heart and find that one of those memories that you cherish, the Christmas memories. That it could be as a child. It could be as an adult. It could be as a grandparent. It could be anything at all. Just go and find that tree, that table, that morning, that night, that carol. Find that memory. When Jesus gathered with his disciples, he said something that we don't always remember. He said, remember, do this in memory of me, that this is a place of memory. Now, the night that Jesus shared this meal was filled with fear and turmoil and anxiety and worry and dread. And he bid his disciples to enter into this moment to find the power of beauty, to find the power of love and strength, but mostly the courage that if you give your life away, you keep it. If you offer your, your heart and your soul to others, you find it. This is the table of our Lord. I invite your memory here. I invite your courage here, but mostly, let us find joy here. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, for you have gathered us to this table. You have joined our voices in song. You have commingled our hearts in prayer. And now we share this bread and this cup as the common meal of faith. Let us find the strength 
and the courage to live a life of community, to see each other as a brother and sister, to lift the fallen, to remember the forgotten, to love the broken. Give us that strength, for we know it is not easy. We know that in your life there was neither ease or rest, and you told us that the fox has, no, has a den, the bird has a nest, but if we follow you, there's challenge. Help us today to follow you, to follow you through Advent, to follow you to this table, but mostly to follow you unto our own heart that we would see and know the presence of hope and faith and love and that we would accept those gifts as ours. We pray today for those who suffer and grieve. We remember the Roscoe family. We remember all those at Christmas who it's the first year without. It's the first year without a mom or a dad. It's the first year without the one that we love. We pray that you would, you would bind those hearts. Help us to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. We remember, too, those who hang an ornament this year for their first Christmas, the newborns. We pray that we would see in them a moment where we find strength and love. Bless each one, those that have been gathered unto you and those that you gather unto us. We lift up this prayer and the prayer your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let us not fall to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord took the bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. You, you do this in memory of me. In the same fashion, after the supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this also in memory of me. If the ushers are ready, let them come.
the bread of life. The cup of Christ. Please pray with me. Almighty and gracious God, let the bread and the cup transform our lives so that the days that we live out, the words that we speak, the actions that we take are like the beauty of music, the chords that reach to you. Amen. Friends, in the spirit of Advent, in the spirit of Christmas, and all of the miracles that unfold before us, I pray that we encounter each other today and in the days of come with the spirit of moving alongside each other, of holding each other's fears, of joining each other in joy. And may the love and grace and peace of Jesus be felt with us every step of the way. Amen.